I am Mrs. Biography. Today's guest is Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens is one of the most famous writers of all time. The British writer's books included Oliver Twist, Tale of Two Cities, David Copperfield, Great Expectations, and my personal favorite, A Christmas Carol. He wrote 30 books. Please welcome to my talk show, Charles Dickens. Oh. Oh, thank you for inviting me to your talk show, Miss Biography. I'm eager to share my story of my life story with your studio audience. <laughs> I can see from all the hands waving that my audience has so many questions to ask of you. Let's start with audience question number one. What would you like to ask my guest, Charles Dickens? Hi! For most of us, our childhood has a role in shaping what kind of adults we become. Can you share a memory you have of your own childhood? Well, I had some wonderful memories and lots of terrible memories of my childhood. I must say that much that I experienced, and especially the poverty I saw in my childhood, had a lasting effect on me. I remember walking with my father and coming up a beautiful home. It was called Gad's Hill Place. I turned to my father and I said that one day I will live there. He said to me, if I worked hard, one day I might do so. Years later, I purchased my first home. I read that you loved music. <laughs> and you learned to play the piano? Were you as successful as a pianist as you were a writer? Unfortunately, my interest in the piano was greater than my ability. I remember my music teacher saying of my efforts, he had no aptitude for music and it was robbing his parents to continue giving him lessons. That was a pretty negative comment for my teacher to make, wouldn't you say? I was wondering if there was anything in your childhood that sparked an interest in storytelling. Oh, definitely. When my parents had some money, we actually had a nursemaid. Her name was Mary Weller. Each night, I remember eagerly waiting for Mary to tell us one of her stories at bedtime. They tended to be horror stories and really scared my siblings and me. Still remember one she told of a captain murderer who killed his wife and baked them into pies. I had nightmares from some of her stories, but I was fascinated by her ability to tell a story that would keep her audience listening. I hope that one day I could have this ability. By the way, I later would write a short story about this caption. Yeah, uh, as a child, your parents loved to throw parties and life was good. You're a good student. You had an imagination even at an early age. You enjoyed activities, including ice skating and rowing with your fellow students. Tell us about your early education. I really wanted an education. It was very important to me as I saw an education as a way to have a better life. I loved to read and really liked reading Robinson Crusoe, Tales of the Arabian Nights, Peregrine Pickle, and Don Quixote. Perhaps you've read some of these books? Unfortunately, my life came crashing down at the age of 10. My father lost all his money. I was taken out of school as my parents couldn't afford to send me to school any longer. They said they could only send one child and I felt my sister Fanny had a better chance to succeed than me. My father started selling our dishes, our furniture and even my books. It still wasn't enough to pay all the bills and eventually we were sent to a poor house. I learned that you learned a valuable lesson from your father. You learned to never be in such debt. 
I really, I read when you started to earn some money, you divided it up in bags for each day of the week. You never used another day's money until that day. What was it like when your family moved to the poorhouse? Well, my family was sent to the Marshallers' prison until my father could pay his creditors. It was here the family remained for almost 14 weeks. During that time, four of my younger siblings lived at the prison, but my parents sent me to work to help pay my father's debt. I worked at the Warren's blacking factory. My job was to cover the blacking paste jars used for shoe polish with paper labels. I worked for 10 hours a day, six days a week for what today would be about $17. Because of the long days, I stayed at a boarding house where I had no supervision or anyone to watch over me. I was only 12. My, how awful for you. Child labor was terrible. Fact of life during this time. Children as young as four would work in factories. And some children had very dangerous jobs like climbing inside chimneys to clean them and actually operated large machinery. Children didn't see sunlight, were given little food or break time, and many children were abused in the factories. Can you tell us a bit more about working at the blackening factory? Another boy and I were very fast at our job, so we were placed at desk near a window. People passing by would stop to watch us for entertainment. It was very embarrassing for me. One of the boys I met was named Bob Fagan. I observed much about life for those in poverty and later used what I learned in my books. Bob Fagan became a character in my Oliver Twist book. So your father received an inheritance and was able to pay his debts. Did you go back to school? Sad memories. Very sad memories. Would you believe my mother actually wanted me to continue at Warren's Blacken Factory? I was just a kid. A kid that wanted an education. And my mother wanted me to stay at the factory and not return to school. I would be doomed to poverty for the rest of my life. I remember saying about my mother's desire for me to continue working at the factory. I never afterwards forgot. I never shall forget. I never shall forget. And I never can forget that my mother was warm for my being sent back. Unfortunately, my father said I could return to school. At the age of 15, my father was again in debt, and so I had to leave school again and go back to work. This time I worked at a lawyer's office. I taught myself a shorthand and became a court reporter. In my book, Nicholas Nickleby, the character Mrs. Nickleby, a woman that married her daughter off knowing she'd have a life of misery, was based on my own mother. Honey, do you always want to be a writer? I said, I loved storytelling and was good at it, but actually I wanted to be an actor. I met lots of different people and had a knack for different accents to use with different characters I created. I thought acting would be a perfect occupation for me. When I had an opportunity to get my first acting job at the Convent Garden Theatre, I was very excited. Unfortunately, I got a very bad cold and could not go on to the audition. I did work for a while in theatre, but I noticed that a magazine monthly magazine to be exact, was exa accepting stories, so I decided to give writing a chance, and that's how I became a writer. What story at Dinner at Polar Walk was your first published work? The year was 1833, and you used that pen name, Boz, B-O-Z. And people liked your humor. Your first novel, The Pickwick Papers, was a hit. Actually, it was a chapter book with a new installment each month. Paper, people early, eagerly waited for the next chapter to be published and you were only 25 years old. Tell us more about your writing career. Where do I start? Well, in 1836, Oliver Twist was published. The story shared the horrors of child labour and poverty in London, England. 
It told of young children roaming the streets begging, too poor to attend school. The story involved a ring of child thieves working for an awful man named Fagin. People were so upset about what they read that laws were actually changed about child labor. Interestingly, this chapter book took two years for readers to complete. On the topic of trains, I read that you did a very heroic action while on a train trip. Can you share what happened? I certainly can. On June 9th, 1865, en route to London, the train I was traveling on jumped the tracks and seven carriages hung partway over a bridge. The train carriage I was in remained on the tracks. I got out to safety and went back to help others who were trapped in the train cars. I then returned once again to retrieve the manuscript, Our Mutual Friend, I was working on. Ten people died and many were injured in the Chapelhurst rail crash. Yes, people called me a hero and said I had saved the lives of several people. It's me again. Um, I read that you had some really famous friends, including people like Edgar Allan Poe and Hans Christian Andersen. There is a story about one particular visit to your home by Hans Christian Andersen. Can you tell us what happened? Although I love to have company come for a visit, Hans really overstayed his visit by staying for five Weeks. Four weeks. I have to say I got a bit tired of him after a while and wished for him to leave. He never seemed to take the hint. When he finally did leave, I wrote on the mirror in the guest room where he had stayed. Hans Anderson slept in this room for five weeks, which seemed to the family ages. Guide, you had a tremendous honor. You were buried in Poet's Corner in Westminster Abbey in London, England. Five of your novels were listed in the 2003 The Best Read of Top 100 Books. Although you ask not to have any statues built in your honor, there are actually several, including one in Australia, your birth city of Portsmouth, England, and in the state of Pennsylvania. <laughs> You are remembered as more than a fantastic writer, but someone that cared about the suffering and the poor. Your books helped to create an awareness of people that helped to bring about change to the lives of many people. Thank you for being my guest. I think my audience and I have learned much about your life. Thank you so much for inviting me. I had such a wonderful time on your show.